Gandang araw. Now, ang topic natin ngayon is the part 3, the third part of infinite geometric series. This time, we will be solving word problems involving infinite geometric series. Madali lang naman to, na walang kahirap-hirap. So, remember to analyze the problem very carefully. And remember the formula for an infinite geometric series. S up to infinity is equal to A sub 1 all over 1 minus R. For R greater than negative 1 but less than 1. So remember that the sum exists only if the value of R is within this range. Okay. So let's try to answer number 1. So a pendulum makes an arc of length 24 inches on its first swing. So there is a pendulum. So let's try to draw. Let's say ito yung palik. Ito yung bag ng pendulum. So, this is the pendulum. So, the pendulum would make a first wing reaching 24 inches. So, hanggang dito. No? Hanggang dito. Okay? So, this is 24 inches. On each succeeding swing, the length of an arc is 3 fifths of the length in the previous swing. That means... Kung 24 nung unang swing, pagbalik niya, 3 fifths na lang. So, siguro hanggang dito na lang. Hanggang dito na lang pagbalik. Hindi na aabot dun sa taas. Okay? Tapos, pag nag-swing siya ulit, pag nag-swing siya ulit, that would be another 3 fifths. Mababawasan na yung, yung length na na cover niya. Hanggang dito na lang siya. Pag nag-swing siya ulit, hanggang dito na lang. And so on, pabalik-balik. So, kapag rinon natin, so ito yung, yung pendulum. This is the first swing. This is the second swing. This is the third swing. The fourth swing. The fifth swing. The sixth. The seventh. And so on until it stops. The question is, when does it stop? On, how, on, on, on what particular swing will it stop? So, we do not know. So, in that case, we'll be regarding this as infinite geometric series. So, we want to determine the distance traveled by the pendulum or by the tip of the pendulum before coming to rest. So, that would be an infinite geometric series problem. So, the first is 24. That's the first term, A sub 1. Then, the next term would be 3 fifths of 24. 3 fifths of 24, that means the common ratio is 3 over 5. So we want to determine the total distance, that's the sum, up to infinity. Kasi hindi natin alam kung pang ilang swing siya bago mag-stop. Now, so we'll regard that as infinite. So we have a sub 1 over 1 minus r. So sum up to infinity is a sub 1 is 24 over 1 minus the common ratio is 3. Remember, when we simplify this, so 24 over 5 times 1 is 5, minus 3 is 2 over 5. Then, get the reciprocal, 24 times 5 over 2. Now, we could simplify 24 and 2. 24 divided by 2 is actually 12. So, therefore, the sum to infinity is 12 times 5. And what is 12 times 5? That is 60. So, therefore, the sum to infinity is 60 inches. What does that mean? That it would take 60 inches for the tip of the pendulum before it would come to rest. It would be able to travel 60 inches before coming to rest. And that's it. That's very simple. Okay, now, let's try to answer the second problem. A ball is dropped at a height of 120 feet and it bounds two-thirds of its previous height. How far would have the ball travel before coming to rest? So let's illustrate. Let's say this is the ground. So the ball is dropped at a particular height. In this problem, 120 feet. Okay. But for illustration, okay, let's regard the first height as A sub 1. Okay. So after, after reaching the, the ground, of course, the ball would bounce. Ang sabi, it will bounce, it will bounce two-thirds of the previous height. Two-thirds of the previous height. So, 
So if two thirds is the ratio, if two thirds is the ratio, then that means etong etong first bounce na to, that would be a sub one times r. Ah, so a sub one times r. Now at this height, bababa yung bola with the same height. So kung a sub one times r pa kyaat. That means pababa, parehong height pa rin yun. That's a sub 1 times r pa rin. Tama. Okay. Or actually a sub 2. No? O pwede natin isulat a sub 2 kung gusto nyo. Tapos ito a sub 2. Tapos aakit naman yung bola. That would be the third height. a sub 3. Tapos bababa. Siyempre pagbaba niya is the same height as well. That would be a sub 3. Yung nakakit ulit, that would be a sub 4. Bababa ulit, that would be a sub 4. And so on until it stops. So we do not know when it stops. So we'll regard this as infinite geometric series. So we want to determine that the, the distance, the total distance traveled by the ball. So total distance, that would be sum of all the distances traveled. So if we're going to analyze the sum of all the distances is a sub 1 plus this is 2a sub 2 plus 2a sub 3 plus 2a sub 4 plus 2a sub 5 plus 2a sub 6 and so on. So as you can see, all the succeeding height after a sub 1 are multiplied by 2. What does that tell us? That if we are going to determine the sum up to infinity, remember we have the formula a sub 1 over 1 minus r. Okay, so to get the sum, we have to multiply this by 2. Because all the other terms after a sub 1 are multiplied by 2. So just multiply this by 2. But then, if we are going to multiply this by 2, then we have multiplied a sub 1 by 2 as well. But remember, a sub 1 is only counted once, not twice. So, in order, to, in order to retain the original value, we have to subtract a sub 1. Kasi nabilang natin ng dalawang beses yung a sub 1 eh. Since nabilang natin ng dalawang, basis yung, dalawang beses yung a sub 1, which in fact, isang beses lang siya, so, mag-minus tayo ng a sub 1. Okay? So, this will be our formula for the bouncing ball. This is actually a special formula for the bouncing ball. So, do not forget this formula. Sum up to infinity is equal to 2 times a sub 1 over 1 minus r times a sub 1. Where a sub 1 is the height where it is dropped. The height where it is dropped. So, in the problem, going back to the problem... So, the height where it is dropped is 120 feet. That would be a sub 1. So, a sub 1 is 120. It bounds 2 thirds of the previous height. So, the ratio is 2 thirds. So, how far would have the ball travel before coming to rest? So, just use the formula that we have derived. So, we have the sum up to infinity is equal to 2 times a sub 1 over 1 minus r minus a sub 1. So this is 2 times, our a sub 1 is 120 over 1 minus 2 thirds minus 120. So 2 times 120, that's 240 over, simplify the denominator, 3 times 1 is 3 minus 2 is 1 over the denominator 3 minus 120. So 240 times the reciprocal of the denominator 3 minus 120. So what is 240 times 3. So I'll be using your calculator. So 240 times 3 is 720. So 720 minus 120, that would be 600. So therefore, the ball would have reached 600 feet before coming to rest. So the total distance traveled by the ball would be 600 feet. That simple. Okay, now, let us have problem number three. 
So, for the third problem, we are going to express the decimal 0 0.222 and so on as a fraction in lowest term. So, we know that the decimal 0 0.22222 and so on is a repeating and non-terminating decimal. Walang katapos na niyan. So, how are we going to express this into fraction using infinite geometric series? Actually, napakadali lang. So, we'll just rewrite 0 0.2222 and so on as a sum of its decimal part. So, this is actually 0 0.2, that's the first decimal, 0 0.2 plus 0 0.02, the second decimal place, plus 0 0.002 plus 0 0.0002 plus 0 0.00002 and so on. <laughs> so if we're going to add all of this up with 0 0.22222 and so on. Okay, if you're going to analyze, these terms are geometric sequence or form these terms form a geometric sequence this is a sub 1 this is a sub 2 a sub 3 a sub 4 a sub 5 and so on let's solve for the common ratio so the common ratio is the quotient of two consecutive terms so mula dito over this so the ratio would be 0 0.02 over 0 0.2. So, yung technique natin kanina, no? When we are dealing with decimals, so just multiply this by, since we have here two decimal places, so we multiply this by 100, okay? And since we multiply the numerator by 100, then we have to multiply the denominator by 100 as well. So, 0 0.02 times 100 would be, what? 1, 2, 2. Over 0 0.2 times 100 is 20. You can use your calculator to check. So, dividing this by 2, 2 divided by 2 is 1, 20 divided by 2 is 10. So, the common ratio is 1 over 10. Or you can use 0.1. You can use 0.1. Okay, so since this is infinite, therefore, we could use the formula for infinite geometric series. That would be a sub 1 over 1 minus r. So, the sum up to infinity is a sub 1 is the first term that would be 0 0.2 over 1 minus 1 over 10 can be written as 0 0.1. You can check your calculator if you want. So, 1 over 10 is 0 0.1. So, 1 minus 0 0.1 is actually 0 0.9. Okay? So, we have one decimal place in the numerator and one decimal place in the denominator. So, multiply this by 10 and this also by 10. So, this would be 2 over 9. So therefore, the sum to infinity is 2 over 9. What does that tell us? That 0 0.2222 and so on is actually equivalent to 2 over 9. Okay? Now, to check, to check, let's use the calculator. So, 2. Let's check the calculator. We have 2 over 9. Let us see if this is really equal to 0 0.222 and so on. That's it. So, we have a correct value. That's 2 over 9. Now, let us go to the last number. We have number 4. So, express the decimal 0 0.24242424 .24 and so on as a fraction in lowest term. Actually, we have similar problem with the previous. But, you can see that two digits are repeated here. Yung kanina, one digit lang. Na puro two lang na ulit. Dito ay two, four, two, four, two, four. So, two digits, two and four, are repeated indefinitely. So, this is infinite. So, we could use the formula for infinite geometric series. So, ang gagawin lang natin is, let us rewrite 0 0.242424 as a sum of its decimal parts. So, 0 0.242424 and so on. Is actually equivalent to 0 0.24 plus this part is 0 0.00024 plus 0 0.00024. Remember the alignment, the menu alignment, 24, 24, 24. So, ganun naman. And so on. So, pag natin yan, 
that would be 0 0.24242424 and so on. So this is our first term is sub 1. So let's determine the common ratio. So we divide natin pa. So 0 0.0024 divided by 0 0.24. Okay, so we have four decimal places here. Actually, yung shortcut dun. Move mo lang yung decimal to the right. So let's move the decimal four units to the right para matanggal yung decimal. One, two, three, four. So, lagay natin dito. So that would be 24. Over. Siyempre, nag-move ka ng four decimal places to the right. Mag-move ka rin dito ng four decimal places to the right. One, two, three, four. Yun. Then you add zeros here. So, we have here 2,400. So, the ratio is 24 over 2,400. So, but 2,400 is actually factorable to 24 times 100. Cancel to. So, matitira ay 1. Tara. So, 24 divided by 24 is 1. So, therefore, the ratio is 1 over 100. So, my first, my first term na tayo, 0 0.24, May ratio na tayo, 1 over 100. Now, we could get the sum up to infinity. So, the formula A sub 1 over 1 minus R. So, A sub 1 is 0 0.24 over 1 minus. Yung 1 over 100 na, if you have a calculator, pwede natin isulat ito into decimal. So, 1 divided by 100 would be 0 0.01. So, pwede natin isulat as 0 0.01. So, this is 0 0.01. So, therefore, the sum up to infinity is 0 0.24 over 1 minus 0 0.01. So, 1 minus 0 0.01, that would be 0 0.99. So, 0 0.99. Well, yung, yung shortcut kanina, move the decimal point. So, two decimal places, so we have 1, 2. Okay, so that's 24 over. Dito rin, two decimal places, then 1, 2 over 99. So therefore, the sum up to infinity is 24 over 99. So 0 0.242424 and so on is equal to 24 over 20 over 99. But actually, we could write this in its simplest form. So 24 over 99, we could still divide this by 3. So 24 divided by 3 is 8. 99 divided by 3 is 33. Therefore, we can still simplify this into 8 over 33. So this would be the fraction. 8 over 33 in simplest form, or 24 over 99. So let's check if this is correct. So 8 divided by 3, 8 over 33, 0.242424, and so on. Or 24... 24 over 99 would be 0 0.2424 and we are correct. That's it. It's very easy.